hello and welcome to part two of Tweezer Tops and Bottoms. If you have not watched part one already, then go watch it. That's linked here. I will post it here, link it here, whatever. And then if you have watched part one or you already like kind of know what tweezers are and you don't want to watch that video, no worries. And we'll just continue on. I wanted to show you guys an example. This has come up a lot already today and the video has only been up one day. So I figured part two is what it is. We're going to do part two. That video that is up was pre-recorded months ago and I just had it edited so that way I could put it up because it was already recorded. It had so many pairs in it that I went through. It's not the best quality. I'm aware, guys. Don't keep commenting on it. I know. The beginning stuff is really bad. The middle stuff's bad. The stuff I make now is bad. Like, I'm aware. You don't have to keep commenting on it. I'm fully aware. However, the educational aspect is there. So that video stays and it remains and it just got a little bit of a tweak with editing. I do trade them a little bit different. Everyone has different versions of what tweezer tops and bottoms are. So watch that video if you want to know what like I consider it. However, lots of questions about how do I apply the indicators to this? Like you show the markup, you show it and you say, oh, everything's free. Yeah, it is. Everything on learning about tweezer tops and bottoms is free. But I know some of you work with free indicators. Some of you work with the paid indicators. So I'm going to show you both. Whatever version you want, I'm going to show it to you both on here and just take whatever indicators apply to you and use it to help put towards spotting the tweezer tops and bottoms. As far as the indicators go, there are two paid ones that you're seeing on my screen. One is the TDS, that is the Trend Detection System. And the second one is the Logistics Map Index. Both of these indicators, the TDS are the one with the stars, and it kind of has this little outline happening. And the Logistics Map is just this little trend detector here, this little line here. Both of those are paid indicators that come as part of a membership package that you get if you join the Perfect Entry group. That link is below in the description box, the Perfect Entry Discord. It will take you there, and that's where you can find out how to purchase the indicators if you are interested in them. If you are somebody who's looking for just the free stuff, then the Artie is completely free. You will see it called the Artie. It is by Phoenix Binary. You can just search it in and it will pop up. This is version 2.0. So if you are looking for that, that is what this thing is with the clouds that you're kind of seeing behind here and what this little color changing 200 moving average is. So that is what the Artie is. Tweezer and kangaroo tail indicator is another free one. Um, I'm not going to show you guys kangaroo tails in here, but like if you're interested in them, you can definitely watch them. There's a, oh man, I'm so bad at YouTubers like actual names, but there's like that kangaroo guy. I will put his name here, but as you know, he trades all the kangaroo tails and I believe he likes indices a lot too. So uh, if you're into the indices too, and you're like into kangaroo tails, that's your thing. Check him out. I don't know him at all, but I know he likes kangaroo tails, so definitely look into him if that's your thing. For me, I like tweezers. I just tend to spot them better, but everyone has their kink. So if kangaroo tails is it, then maybe you would still like this indicator. For me, I like the tweezers. But completely free. You can find it on there. Oh, lots of different tweezer tops and bottom indicators. If this isn't the indicator for you, find another tweezer top one that you like, or just use your eyes to find them. The other indicator that I do keep on is the RSI. I do like the RSI set to 50 just as a way to help with divergence. The RD indicator is going to have a divergence oscillator also put out, but that one is not available just yet. It is being updated to the 2.0 version and it should be out in the next couple of days. So once that is out, I will put that on a chart and I will show you guys that and how to use that because I really love that it just like does the divergence for you. A lot of you struggle with that. And I think some traders who have been doing it for a while can just kind of spot it and just see it. But for those of you who are still really having a hard time, having that indicator there is really, really nice. Spotting divergence before a tweezer prints is a very good confluence. So that's why I like to have the RSI there just in case. Those are the indicators. So it looks like a lot is going on on here. I personally would probably be stripping a lot of this back, but I want to show it to you so you guys have an idea of what's going on because there's a lot of reasons that you would take or wouldn't take a, tw a tweezer top or bottom candle pattern. So today happened to just be the perfect tweezer top. It printed for me 
it was just fate just gave it to me today and I thank you for that because my video on tweezer tops and bottoms literally was set to release at 6 a.m. this time which you can see the tweezers print and the market just falls so I don't know I guess the uh, market gods have looked down upon me today and said here I will give you exactly what you need to make part two of the tweezer top and bottom video here it is so as far as this goes it's actually really is perfect because you get a lot of tweezer signals that will print. They, that doesn't always mean you should take that trade. You need to have more than one confluence to take a trade. You can't just say, oh, I saw tweezers. I'm going to take my trade. That's dumb. Don't do it. You will lose a lot. As you can see, lose, lose, uh, lose. Like there's just, you're going to lose. Mm, lose. Like, yeah, you don't want to do that. But you will if you do it with multiple confluences and do it correctly by doing your like markup on your chart, analyzing everything first, and then putting on the indicators and having a lot of confluences all together, confirming that you want to take this, this tweezer top or bottom trade, you will have a higher probability of that trade working out for you. Here's what we're looking for. Basically, in this example, I'm going to show you, we had the tweezer tops print. Let me zoom in for you. And this was a really great tweezer top set. The reason I like these when they printed is because you have your wicks that are, they're tiny, tiny little guys, but they are 100% the same wick when you line it up, you can see. And I have my engulfing candle, which I want. I want to see that. And that helps to predict that potentially we have some momentum being shifted. Otherwise, I want you guys to still do all of the normal markups that you would be doing for any type of trade. So if you don't know what I mean, then please go watch this video where it's the free stochastic RSI and RSI version. That is like my free way around doing this. It will be updated soon once the RD 2.0 comes out. But uh, for now, that's still the version that I want you guys to watch because it is a monster video, but I do a very detailed markup of like support and resistance zones. So if you don't understand how to do that, then you would want to go watch that. It's very basic. It's not anything super hard to understand, but I want you guys to be doing that. I want you to do your chart analysis first. As always, mark up your charts first, then look at your indicators. Yes, you are seeing a candle pattern print here, and now you can go ahead and do your markup. The candle pattern is still part of your chart analysis, which is good, but you have to also then put in your like support and resistance and all that stuff. That's what I'm gonna show you guys here. I kind of like to use bodies or like closer to the bodies. I like this area where you are having support formed here and you had resistance here and you have where your can't your tweezers pretending none of this exists yet. You have where your tweezer is sitting there on that level of support now. That's what you're looking at. We have we're pretending none of this exists yet. I personally would not get in on this tweezer because all I have is a tweezer sitting at a support level and I don't like that. I don't like that. I have nothing else to tell me that it's not going to reject off this support and push up even more. I have no way of knowing if it was going to do that because I only have this one confluence of the tweezers at this point. Had I had divergence on my RSI, maybe I should draw it for you. Let me draw it hypothetically, hypothetically pretend here, guys, use your imagination. Imagine that the market was like up like that, right? And then it came down where it is now and just pretend, keep imagining for me guys. I need you to use your imagination. What we're gonna pretend, like that's what the market actually did. It would look something like this. So when we draw our little trend line, it would be a divergence happening. So basically what that means is that your RSI was high up here and your market, the actual market was here. So that's what happened there. That's what, how high your RSI was, hypothetically, remember, use your imagination. And then we're coming here, where we're looking at your RSI is here at this level, but the market pushed up. So that creates this situation where you're having divergence. RSI is trending down, but your market is actually pushing up. Had that happened, along with the tweezer top print, I would have said you can get in at the close of this candle, the close where the tweezer top printed, but it didn't. So that's all complete BS that I just made up. That didn't actually happen. But some of you have asked, what if that happens? Can you get in sooner? 
And the answer is yes. Then you could look to potentially get in sooner. But it didn't happen in this example. So what I want to show you guys is when I would actually have gotten in. You have that candle and I would be waiting because you get these little nothing candles that print. You just go back into sitting on that support line that I showed you we had earlier. Now you get this nice, strong, bearish candle that prints. Nice, strong, bearish candle showing that there's momentum, showing that there's volume back in the market now, not all oh, this crappiness that's happening over here. You actually have some people showing up. Everyone's waking up, 6 a.m., they're getting a coffee. All of the market people are starting to come back, and we got volume back in the market. That's what that candle's signaling to me, and that is a good signal to have. So to me, that is a candle I would be interested in. And then you say, why, Christy? Like, why, why would you take that? Because we have this area that you've broken through, that you kind of were just sitting on, this support area I was just saying earlier. We've broken through that now. Then you have in the already, if you look in the background here, where it changes from green to red, that helps to tell you that there is a momentum. This is an oscillator, momentum oscillator. It will help tell you that it has changed. This nice strong candle has showed that there is a big shift that just happened. Then you also have your LMI here, which turned red at that candle. Tells you that there's been a trend change. And you have your RSI if you're using the free version. That is under the 50. Tells you that there's a trend change because you're under the 50. All of these things are telling you that the market's just about to drop. So we have your tweezers here. Then we have a break of a support zone with this nice strong candle. We have all of our indicators telling you like, yep, time to drop. So let's go. And that's when you would be looking to get in the trade where I would at the close of that candle. So it would look something like this. We'd get in on the close. My stop loss for this would be just above those tweezer tops. And then you'd be looking to target, I would look for the 200 here because that makes sense. When you're looking over to the left, that 200, you have here this area where these tweezer bottoms printed. And you can see all of the price sitting here where it just created another support zone. All of this lines up when you draw out your little line, when you're putting it right at the bottom there of your tweezers, all in that zone where you have price hitting, it is hitting at your 200 moving average. So that's where I would target. So you have a bunch of reasons as to why to target that as your first take profit zone. So that to me is a no brainer. That makes sense. And then the way you would work this is however you want to risk manage. Everybody works risk manage differently. I personally stack my trades and for this trade, I probably would take uh, probably four trades because I have a 38 point stop loss. For me, for my account size that I trade on, that would be fine to take four trades. And I am getting more than a one to 1.5 reward for those trades. So I would probably, uh, I'm looking and thinking, I honestly probably would close out three of my four trades when it hits this 200. Here's the logic, because you're hitting a 200. Like that's as simple as that. That's you're hitting the 200. If I was just going to another regular old zone, like just some boring old zone somewhere, that's different. But I'm hitting a 200 moving average, which you have to be prepared for to be a pretty massive impact when it hits that. So because of that, I probably would be looking to just take a nice little three three full trades here, close three of the four that I would take, close them completely out, and I would allow one to remain open to basically collect the rest of this goodness that drops. And that's where I would look to be looking to the left to think, where do I want my next one to go? So my take profit one would be at that moving average, this blue line we have marked, take profit two, I would look here to the left in this area and this area of support that it's formed, that would be take profit two. And if I wanted to keep going, we're like down here, all of this area of resistance that was formed. And you can see you would have gotten all of that. And you know, you just keep holding it and trailing along your trade. So that's exactly what I would do. Once I close out those first three, like I said, here on the 200, I would quickly move the remaining trade I have open, the one I'm leaving open, to slightly in profit. So I would be doing this where I move my stop loss from up here to just slightly in profit 
I would make sure I had my spread or commissions or whatever you have for your brokers covered, moving my stop while slightly in profit. So that way I am at no risk of ever losing now. I've made three winning trades and potentially could catch this massive drop that you get from those tweezers. You know, it's not always guaranteed, but that's the safe way to trade because now you're not losing. Even if it came back and hit my stop loss, I am slightly in profit. You know, so maybe you make $10 or maybe you make 100 maybe you make 1000 depending on your lot sizes that you were using or what you were trading or how you were trading it. But that's all, like I said, risk management is personalized up to you guys to figure out. But that's how you would do it because Potentially, you could be getting a really nice trade that out of these tweezers, way more than a 1 to 1.5. So I don't like to tell you guys to limit yourself by just doing a certain risk to reward all the time. I want you to be looking at the market and actually looking at what makes sense. But make sure you're not being greedy. Make sure you're securing your profits and make sure you're closing them out when it makes sense. Like hitting that 200 is a safe way to trade. You should never be just like, oh, well, you know, maybe I, maybe it's going to drop like a ton. No, maybe it won't, though. It could have absolutely rejected off that 200 and shot up and you would have been SOL. So please make sure you're being smart about it when you're doing stuff like that. I also want to show you guys if you were waiting for the star to print. Because some of you guys had sent me this and you were a little nervous because this candle didn't feel like it was broken enough out of the zone, depending on where you place your lines or your if you do the little rectangles. And I get that. I understand that. So if you're a little more cautious, you would be looking here for the star. So the stars, when they print on the trend detection system indicator, they are showing a bunch of momentum in that direction. So they are calculated that way to do that. And that is what that's doing. It also gives you a built-in stop loss up here. So you would be putting your stop loss above the star, which if you look, actually falls right with that area of the zone that I was marking when you look to the left. And, you know, so it calculates all that for you. So if you were going to be waiting a little bit to see if these tweezers actually were like something you wanted to trade and you weren't loving this more aggressive spot that I said I would have gotten in at, then you would wait for the star. And that's perfectly OK, guys. If you're not sure yet, you would wait for the star. Just wait for that. You will see it, everything still lines up as long as it all still works out for you. you that you're fine to do that. Same thing with this as far as your stop loss and where you would be targeting zone wise, you would still be targeting the 200. So you're getting a little bit less. You're not getting the 1 to 1.5. You're getting the 1 to 1.2. But if you're feeling like in your head that's the safer bet for you, then please do do that. You know, I don't want you guys to ever feel like you're worried about a trade. So a lot of you did ask about like, how would you do it with the TDS? Because a lot of you are really liking that version right now of it. And I get that, you know, that's how I would do it with the star. It's a little bit safer of a trade to take when you're taking the stars and you're lining it all up correctly with the tweezer top. So you have a lot of confirmations. Again, same thing. You have your tweezers. You have your red in the background on the arty. You've broken out of your zone that you can see even down here, your support area that you've created. You're pushed down out of that. You have your red on your LMI and you have your RSI under the 50. So all of these things, every one of them, regardless of whether you're using all of them or whether you're using some of them, are all confirming that you should be selling. So multiple reasons why I would look to sell there. So that is it, guys. I really just wanted to run through this one example with you and just show you, you know, the potential here and why you would take, you know, how you could take these trades and um, how it would help you weed out other tweezers. Because like you can see, there's lots of times you're faked out, but there's a lot of reasons they don't work. And, you know, just to quickly show you, like you have a tweezer that prints here and this is telling you you should be buying. But guess what? You shouldn't be buying because your LMI is red. You're under the 50. You're not trying to buy. Same thing here. Tells you you should be buying. You're, un you're, you're red. You're under the 50. That's not looking for a buy. You have no blue star signaling for you to buy. Like, there's nothing about this that is signaling you guys to buy on those tweezers. And same thing over here too. You This was something somebody had brought up um, about these tweezers. But you know, they was looking for you to sell. And you're not selling. These are bad setups. One, you're in consolidation. A massive amount of consolidation bad idea. Two, you don't have the right setups. You're looking to sell here, but yet you're green. No, you're above the 50. No, 
Same thing here. Your green, above it, above it. These are no setups. Here, this is still not a setup yet, but you eventually get the setup you need where everything makes sense and lines up. None of that happens with these other ones. So that's why I wanted you guys to understand how to weed out the bad ones because a lot of you are like, whoa, there's a lot of false signals. And there are. You have to know how to do market analysis before you can actually apply these indicators and use them profitably. So make sure you're doing your work and your basics of market analysis and whatever, whatever your way of doing that is, however you want to learn it. But make sure you're doing that first, understanding it, and then applying your Okay, guys. So like I said, everything is linked below. Uh, Perfect Entry Discord is where you get the paid ones. If you want the arty, you can just find it now by typing in arty in the indicators. But his Discord is the moving average and that is linked below as well. And that is it for the video.